if you're invested properly, you don't care what the market does. It's because that's that's like you go into the blackjack table with your with your money that you're like, hey, I'm going to try to shoot this thing to the moon, but I know I have everything else behind it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Twin Shores Financial Biweekly Market Update. We are here to sh here to share what we see in the traditional and digital markets. My name is Alex Kaminer. I'm the host here with Tim Nihill, our founder and CEO, and Alex Krieger, our digital markets analyst. We will be talking to, to you today about our big topics that include the stock market holding up and kind of on a small rise, um, real estate. There might be some pump in the crypto market that we are seeing today. Um, we're going to talk about all that and more. So we hope you enjoy the content. And if you do, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below any topics you might want us to talk about. Tim, off to you. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for uh, listening in. We'll try to make today's market update short and sweet. Um, not much going on in traditional markets. The stock market keeps holding up. Uh, we had a Fed pause in terms of the rate hikes. That was a little bit of a relief. As we've talked wow. about with the cycles of money and things like that, you know, we're we're in what I would say is probably like a deflationary period of time, and it's it's almost like the quiet before the storm. Um, as a lot of the macro themes begin to play out. So, um, you know, we're looking at this time as a time where everything's quiet and we're riding out what's going to be the storm. But um, I just think over the next couple of years, there's just going to be some massive, massive buying opportunities that we're already starting to see today. Um, you know, we talk about commercial real estate. It's going to have to go through its... Uh, refinancing at higher rates, which is going to be the theme throughout the summer into the fall. And then I think we're just going to get into our spots where so many deals in real estate, commodities, energy are just, they're already, we're already, they're, we're coming across so many now that it, it's just going to be a tremendous, tremendous opportunity in time. If, if you know what you're doing, if you're out there, yeah, you could play the, the stock market game, but Real assets is going to have its heyday again here in the States and probably across the world. Um, and I think we're just going to see a lot of the assets that were held by the older generation, you know, this massive wealth transfer start to really take hold. You know, it's it's a good thing with the rate hikes. We think they're, they're going to keep the stock market propped up. So hopefully that will be good for everyone's 401ks. And at some point in time, the re you know the reserve currency status is going to go away. Even Janet Yellen said in the Treasury, uh, "Yeah, we see the dominance of the U.S. dollar is going to dwindle. It looks like it's going to take some time for that to happen, but that theme is going to play out. Um, and then they're just, you know, we're going to have to go back and print more money and inject uh, liquidity back into the system. So, um, you know, as an investor, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity." Um, and as we watch these things play out, we're just rocking and rolling. It's a good time if you know what you're doing for sure. Tim, I was a little surprised that they paused the rate hikes, not because they didn't need to, but because we just all kind of expected it to continue to happen. Is that something that you were also shocked about? No, not really. I think they, I, what shocked me was the behavior over the past 12 months and how fast they hiked the rates. We haven't really gotten to the the meat on the bone, if you will, in feeling what the impact of the rate hikes. I think we're going to start seeing that play out in the summer and then even into the fall. September and October <laughs> are never good months for this type of stuff. <laughs> All markets go to shit third quarter into third quarter. If you're invested properly, you don't care what the market does. It's because that's that's like you going to the blackjack table with your with your money that you're like, hey, I'm going to try to shoot this thing to the moon, but I know I have everything else behind it. If they don't inject liquidity into the system and essentially break, I think they they would essentially have broken the system. The system's broken, so you know how long well, can you cover it up for? Well, if they inject liquidity into the system, that's going to create more inflation. Yeah, we're. It, it's the cycle of currency and money throughout the history of humanity. It's no different. And you get inflation, then you get deflation, then you get hyperinflation. I was reading an article, though, over the weekend that was talking about the money, the M2 money supply has been shrinking, though, over the past six months. And they're sucking all the dollars out of the system. Right. I said it. 
Yeah. Trying to. And guess what goes live in a week and a half at the beginning of the end of this quarter, beginning of next month? Yeah, your FedNow program. Yep. New quantum financial system. Here's your number in September 2019. Right. This is some, uh, so this has been billions of dollars. September 2019, 15,008 billions of dollars. So do the math on that. We hit a peak of 21,703. Okay. So 3 billion. No, 17 is 5. Yeah. So Four. then, so right. Then we hit a peak of 21,665 in May of 2022. We are at right now, as of April, 20,673. We're not even close to being where we were in 2019. Nowhere close. So, the whole theme of it is playing out. There's going to be massive opportunities for investors who understand it and are smart about it. And they're going to have to print the money because if the market drops, it's going to break and it's going to hurt and it's going to affect everything. So, you know, as our, as our buddy Chris said in our episode of our podcast, Money Game, print the money or trigger the revolution. And the word on the street is getting out. I mean, I even had it with, you know, we'll tie it to the crypto, but even my wife said she was reading stuff this morning. She came to me, she goes, so Bitcoin is the only real money that's probably ever been created in the history of humanity. She's like, your cash is absolutely worthless. I said, cash is trash. People are, people are waking up to cash is trash. And once confidence is lost in the, in the currency system, it's waked out. So... As an investor, if you're you're playing a market game, we're still pretty defensive, um, still focusing on natural resources, still focusing on commodities, and with what we in our world's called alternative assets, real estate and multifamily and storage and industrial and all that stuff, you know, that stuff doesn't fluctuate in value and it just keeps paying us income. So, you know, it's I'm telling you it's Real good spot to be, and there are a lot of deals starting to pop up. So if you're smart, you'll be able to do really, really well. Well, on the note of Bitcoin, why don't we shift over to the crypto markets? Alex, you said earlier that there's been a there's been a slight pump in the crypto markets. Yeah. So last week we saw we hit our low right at the end of the week. Earlier last week we hit the low and. We had a green doge candle, and now we're seeing the market rally due to the news that came out over the weekend and Friday last week of BlackRock getting a spot Bitcoin ETF. And now other big big boys are coming into, big institutions are coming in to uh, scoop up on the lows. Fidelity, Vanguard, um, Citadel, digital Citadel, yep. There's a bunch of other ones coming in and scooping up everyone that's selling their Bitcoin on the lows to these to these guys right now. And I don't know. Go ahead, Tim. Well, we we how many months ago did you talk about this? Like six months ago, like Fidelity, BlackRock, Vanguard, they are all creating their own trading platforms on the blockchain so they can safely allow their traders to do what they do in the digital asset space. And now it's coming. Yeah. So It'll be interesting be, to see what out. actually happens with the Bitcoin ETF, because they say it's a spot ETF where the one I was reading. So the grayscale is a derivatives trust, not a spot. So Fidelity is going to come in and try to buy their, the grayscale trust. So it'll be interesting to see. So Fidelity Schwab launch, what was it, EDX? I believe that, What? don't quote me on it, but I believe so, EDX, their own trading platform. Yep. So they roll out EDX. Now they can trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin's on there, Bitcoin Cash. Um. Yeah, so... There's your institutional adoption. Yep. Now, is this what we officially call main, mainstream? Yeah. 
yes and no. Um, not yet. Not yet. I, I, my honest opinion is they. It doesn't have to get a. It doesn't even mean it was approved yet. It just means it was filed for a spot. Bitcoin ETF. They could push it off. It do, isn't. They're not due to give an answer until March of 2024. That's a significant time frame. So, better scoop them up in the next eight months. More is coming. Yeah, more is coming. The tokenization of assets is going to be at least a 16 to $20 trillion industry by the year 2030. Yep. If not sooner. That which is an idea becomes a revolution, then becomes a business. So here it comes. Yep. I also well, said in the, uh, oh, sorry, quickly. There is no, a, I was gonna, I was gonna sign off, but keep going if we got more to talk. No, about. no, no, you should, you should know that. You, I don't know if you heard this. I mean, you're the one, you're out there in Portugal this week and, uh, you know, doing some, some homework on how to retire in Portugal, but, uh, I am retiring in Portugal. <laughs> We'll go to take notes and and we'll have we're gonna do an episode on that alone. How to retire yeah. in Portugal. Um there is a massive, massive mega bank being developed that will oversee and be the I think like be the only bank that will cover the entire European Union. Interesting. Yeah, so read up read up on that one. That will be interesting. Yeah, definitely will. Um, well, on that note, from Portugal, I'm going to sign us off. <laughs> uh, so on behalf of Twin Shortest Financial, thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed it and want to keep up to date on the markets, please tune in every other Thursday for your financial information. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put them down below. Alex, Tim, any last words? Not your keys, not your coins, and try to own one Bitcoin, people. Right. Do your homework, invest wisely. Thank you, guys.